Would you recommend that people begin training with remote viewing before like trying to astrally project or does it even matter? Yeah, why not? It's a very safe way of, of, uh, of doing that in controlled way. Actually, when, when I was remote viewing in my beginning of my career, I didn't really understand what I was doing. So I, I scared people because I, proje I projected my body in, in undeliberately. I've done that a few times, uh, actually with, I wouldn't say accident, but at least uh, a cat needed medical attention. I can tell you that. It sounds funny, but it was a little bit sad story. But the cat went fine right later on. But you, you can, you can, animals and people can see you, uh, and and in, you can in, scare them in, involuntarily. In Robert, right? in Robert Monroe's book, he was talking about um, when he first started astrally projecting. Uh, he would let uh, his friend, who was like a, a neighbor, a colleague, something like that know that he was doing this yeah. and like with, with daniel like i could i could say daniel tonight i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna be working on some techniques so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try and visit you daniel's in sweden you're in sweden i'm, I'm here exactly. in, in the u.s so essentially what robert monroe was doing was was projecting out of his body he had techniques to do so where I, I definitely want to go over some of that but when mm. he was pro, when he would when he would get when he would project to his friend's home a lot of the times people were like super alarmed because it didn't look like yeah. Robert. It looked like an orb or something like that. Or, or a classical meeting a dead relative uh, in your in your bedroom at night. Like that a transparent. That can be a little bit uh, scary. And right. the experience can vary a lot. Uh, the, it can be anything from an emotion to actually see someone walking around. But and it depends on the sensitivity of the person. Yeah. So right before you get into someone's uh, living room, um, you could ask for permission. Um, yeah, so or, or know what you're doing. So, so um, please talk to your friend before you visit them uh, on an astral plane. You can you can do other fun stuff as well, and that is that you travel uh, two people actually uh, going at the same time to an, a location and then share the experiences afterwards. I've done that a lot. That's that's fun. So, so the, what? The what what would be some uh some if we're if we're going if we're talking about astral projection right now this is the last time we spoke we didn't really get into it but what are some techniques do you want to go over some techniques because i'm super curious <laughs> as to how to get out of your body i i, I love to uh, i actually had a lecture uh, last night uh, for one and a half hour uh, after one and a half hour i went through i had went through half my presentation and i had to interrupt because uh, people were getting too tired it's a, it's a it's a lot of stuff, but there are some exercises that are really easy to do, uh, and um, I'm going to start posting them on my Instagram account. But but uh, so so the the most most people experience is that people are saying the same thing is that these things happen by accident uh, when they are children and when they they don't know better. Uh, very common that young people do this or even kids. Uh, and then it disappears because it scared them. They realize they're in another body somewhere else. They don't realize what's going on. Or like and a traumatic it, event too, right? It's, it's like a traumatic trauma. event. Yeah. So the first time yeah. you, un, and, and I say that it's really hard to be prepared on that. I, uh, after a hundred times, it's not that exciting and, and you kind of get in control. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and, and it get less intense, but. Then, then you have to get into the scientific part and actually collect the data and do the statistics and math and see if things make sense. Did I learn something? And you need, it's more a deeper understanding of it. And what I do is documenting and, and collect data. Uh, that, is, that is what I do. And, and, and you got to have patience. This is not a quick fix. Um, if, if you think that you can just uh, go for an hour class and then do this, you, it's not like that. It's, a, it's, it's like your life. It, it, it is a personal development thing and you can't do that over a weekend, right? Uh, the, uh, you need to put some hour into it. But even if you take small, small steps, you will see benefits. You will learn new things. Uh, you will be surprised how much you can learn from one little uh, event. And, and you can meditate for, for hours and suddenly you get a couple of seconds of, of uh, insights. And these things you carry with you for the rest of the rest of your life. Um, but some really, do you want me to, I can do one easy technique that is uh, dead simple. I can do, you can do in a minute. You want me to do that? I'd love to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's hear it. And um, so um, if you do this, 
it's kind of to uh, unloosen your body from from your yourself it's actually you you close your eyes you can do it if you want to <laughs> and then you try to remember your first core or one of the old cores you had just imagine that core can you imagine that core mm -hmm. get in front of it and put your hands on the hood feel the feel the metal can you feel it yes can you feel it yeah mm -hmm. go around put your put your hand on the door handle push the button open the door sit in take a seat smell it put your hands on the steering wheel can you feel it yeah put your hands on the gear shift right now open the door again and get out close the door remember the sound and open your eyes is that a real car that was crazy I know. Yeah, I had a, yes. a, a, a 1988 Toyota Celica convertible that, that you know I, what it I bought. Like, right? I know, I know how the, the steering wheel felt. I knew yeah. how the gear, because my dad drove it for like 10 years before me. And, yeah. and, and like, you know, everything was like kind of like worn down, you know, like leather yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's wild. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But now if you want to, if you want to notch it up, you can actually be faster you can you can try to do this fast out in out in out you're losing it up where you because it's about getting out of your head right uh, or getting out of your physical body another very easy exercise is just put your hands on your knees and close your eyes and and then you start using you you, you actually first lift your physical hand up and put it down you have to close your eyes and um, and then put and lift your non-physical hand, not your physical hand, your non-physical hand, lift it and put it back again. And you can, you can clap your non-physical hands. But what you're doing here is that you're loosening up a little bit the, the uh, rigidity of your, of your body, right? So, so they, I have a number of exercises like this and, and then a little bit more explanation of, of what they do. What's what's wild, Rogers, is that like it's 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 something that we do every day, right? We're yeah. all we, we're constantly leaving our body, like when we're having when we're imagining something, when we're reminiscing yeah, exactly. on something. Yeah. One of my two. So so what I'm trying to do here, uh, one of my objectives is to collect tools. I am going. This is my objective and my affirmation and intention. I'm going to collect the largest set of tools for astral traveling and, and meditation and all of these. And I mean tools. I mean tools like, like uh, just uh, stories and I mean physical tools. Uh, I'm going to work on sounds. I'm going to work with art. And uh, that's why the reason why you're here, if you want to know that. Uh, but all of these things are going to be a toolbox to help people uh, travel without uh, doing carbon dioxide using that. So, so 